if election is true, and it is, if predestination is true, and it is, does that mean that God also predestines and elects people to go to hell? No. Hey, smart Christians, welcome back. There's an issue or a question that gets brought up sometimes as it regards to God's sovereignty and his election. And those critics who will say that God does not elect us based off of something that we did not do. He will choose us based off what we do. Well, that can't be the case. It's not election, it's not predestination. If he predestines based off of what you do, that word does not go there. Well, if that's the case, then the critics would say, well, then that means he also predestines people to go to hell. He elects folks to go to hell. And that's just not the case. And where we can find that is in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Here it is. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promises, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you. Here it is. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. This word that's used here, this Greek word is bulimenos. This is not a word for desire, but is it's a word of kind of appointing or placing. So what he's saying is that God is not placing or appointing anyone to perish. The reason why a person goes to hell is because that's where they deserve to go. In other words, the hell you get is the hell you deserve. The hell you get is the hell you earn. What God does know is what mankind will do and what he won't do. In other words, God knows exactly what the end will already be. As a matter of fact, look what he says. He says in uh, Psalm 139.4, he says that even before there is a word on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it all. Therefore, we have to understand that what we think, what we know, what we say, what we do, he's already knowing it. Some other passages that will be helpful for us is found in Isaiah 46 10. He says, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient th times, things which have not been done, saying my purpose will be established. I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Well, what does that mean? Well, God knows that not one of us on our own will keep believing. Not one of us on our own will keep being obedient. So he has to step in either something outwardly or something inwardly needs to take place in order to keep us obedient. Think about it. In the best possible situation, set of circumstances, the best possible environment, man still disobeyed. Thinking about the Garden of Eden. And so, yeah, God knows that we are all going to fail him, but his plan is that um, we be reconciled to him. His plan is that we be his. Now, he said that he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked, declares the Lord, rather than that, than that they should turn uh, from his ways and live. That's what God wants you to do. God is not making anyone sin and he's not making anyone go to hell. You go to hell because you deserve to go to hell because you've done something worth going to hell. And what is it that you ought to go to hell for? Well, let's go to John 3, 18. Notice what he says. He says, he who believes, that is the one that's believing in him is not judged. He who does not believe, so the one that's not believing has been judged already. Why? Because he does not believe, he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. Notice what he says though. And I want you to notice the tense. This is really, really important. This kind of brings this out. One, he says the person who is judged, he has already been judged. Notice the tense of this particular word for judged. And then we're gonna look at the tense of the word for believed. The tense of this word in the Greek is the perfect tense. It is the word kekritai, which is judged. Now, krino is judge, present tense, but kekritai is the perfect tense. What does that mean? It's a completed action from the past. So when we use the perfect tense, we're speaking about something that's already happened. So he's saying these people have already been judged. How is that possible when they haven't even fully lived their lives? Because he says they have already been judged. Notice what he says. Why? Because they have not believed. And what is the tense here? In contrast to the Greek word that's used earlier for those that are believing is the pestuon, this word right here that's used for the perfect tense of those that are not believing, this word that's used here is different. This is the Greek word pepestukin, which is not or believing or have believed, but it's not they have believed. So they have not believed perfect tense. So even in the past, it's known that these people are not going to believe. And so what is God doing? God is judging them on the fact that not only are they not believing now, 
but they will not believe in the future. And because of that, they are already judged. Well, what about the rest of us? This is where God comes in and he does his work. This is where God, as Jesus says in earlier in John 3, he says that the wind blows where it wishes and you don't know where it comes from, where it's going to. So it is of everyone who has been born again. If we go back to this is John, same chapter, verse eight, he says, so it is of everyone who is born of the spirit and those who are born of the spirit. Understand, let's pull this word up again, born of the spirit. This is a perfect tense, but it's in the middle voice, meaning that it happens to you. So because in the middle voice, you didn't do it. It happens to you, obviously for the benefit of God. And so this is a work that God has done in people that when they believe it keeps them believing versus the others who God sees have not believed, nor will they believe. And so for that reason, on that basis, God has judged them already. A couple other passages. Notice what he speaks about in Romans 9, uh, when Paul is bringing up the fact that these Jews are not believing. He says, what if God, although willing to demonstrate his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience, vessels of wrath prepared for destruction? So he's enduring these people. He is, he is, he's being long suffering to all of these vessels who have been prepared for destruction. Why? Because they don't believe, but he's going to show one his wrath, but at the same time, show his love for people who don't deserve it, but he will show love to them anyway. Why? To show that he's a loving God. Now, he is a God who means what he says and says what he means. And so if he says that sin deserves punishment, he will do that. But at the same time, he will show on his own accord, show love, show mercy to those who do not deserve it. So when we come back to this passage in 2 Peter 3, he tells us that he's not willing and sometimes the willing part makes us think, well, he didn't want us to. Well, that's not the word that's used there. The word that's used there is the word bulimai, which is placing or pointing. In other words, God is not the cause. Uh, God is not ordaining. God is not predetermining that they would go to hell. He has determined that those that, that disobey him, that reject him, that they will go to hell. But who it is individually, he didn't have to determine that you are going to disobey him. You're going to disobey him apart from him doing something, you're going to disobey him on your own. And so if we see that those that are in hell are in hell because they chose to do so voluntarily, you have the ability, I believe, to choose him and we don't. And so those that don't end up in hell. You also have the ability to choose him and those that do, I think they keep believing, they keep choosing, they remain in him because their hearts have been changed, their hearts have been regenerated, and the spirit works in their heart, causing them to keep walking in him, to keep believing. That is the very act that, that is uh, originated by God causing you, as Peter says in 1 Peter 1, causing us to be born again. And so in that respect, those are the people that he chooses. He does not choose anyone to go to hell, but in terms of heaven, he does choose them. Amen. <laughs>